Hey, thank you very much. Uh, it's really nice to be here uh, and talk about uh, a topic which is uh, kind of like really close to to my heart and uh, and definitely a focus of, of a lot of the things that we're doing here at Logs.io. So thanks a lot for having us. So uh, I know this has been a big topic over the last uh, year or so around uh, generative AI and LLM. And, and I am a true believer that this is, uh, uh, it's kind of like a really big shift in the way um, people interact with data in generally. Uh, and obviously I'm here to talk about uh, Kubernetes, uh, about observability uh, and the impact that generative AI and LLM uh, is going to have and is already having on uh, on this topic. So um uh, I think uh, Candice mentioned that uh, there is a Q&A box. I would like to make it as, as kind of like sort of like, I know it's a webinar, but uh, as interactive as possible. So if you have questions, feel free to ask them uh, throughout. Uh, we'll probably go through the presentation and then I'm going to uh, attend to this, uh, to the question already being asked and, uh, and hopefully I can get to, uh, to all of it. So um, uh, thanks again for having me. So my name is Asaf and I'm the co-founder and, uh, and CTO of Logs.io. We're an observability solution and, uh, and I'm here to talk about the generative AI and, uh, and LLM as it applies to observability and is specifically around Kubernetes. So the first thing that I did when I kind of like prepared to the webinar for this webinar is, uh, is kind of like do the obvious these days, which is uh, uh, we just ask ChatGPT what would be a good, uh, a good application for generative AI and LLM when we're using it on, on observability. Uh, and surprisingly enough, these are the topic that uh, that came up from uh, from these answers. So one of those kind of like just shows the power of what exists today in uh, in uh, in LLM. So log analytic and pattern recognition, we all know that this is a big issue and a big challenge when it comes to log analytics. How do I recognize? different trends, how do I recognize a change in different patterns? How do I get a change in anomalies? Uh, ChatGPT and uh, and obviously LLM in general is doing a very good job in the ability to recognize it and definitely a very good application of, of how to use it in observability. Um, anomaly detection, there are a lot of models built into, uh, into LLM around anomaly detection. I think the good thing about running anomaly detection with, uh, with LLM is the ability to do it in real time, as opposed to building models that are kind of like a black box model, uh, just looking at all of the things that are happening right now and the ability to basically run anomaly detection on the reality of what I'm seeing right now. So definitely a very good, uh, a very good use for it. Uh, natural language query and reporting. Um, we all know how difficult it is to query uh, and generate uh, visualization and dashboards when it comes to uh, um, to observability, how difficult it is to query the system, how difficult it is to actually know that you're getting what you're what you want to get. Uh, same thing with creating uh, visualization. And this is one thing that uh, we actually already use it within logs.io and the ability to create, searches and create a visualization. I'm going to show you how we do it. Uh, but this is definitely uh, kind of like a very good, again, a very good usage of, of LLM in this. Uh, another area is around alert manager and alert management and triage. So how do I prioritize alert? How do I uh, know what severity is? How do I triage it? How do I co coordinate with other members of my team? So this is something that LLM is very good at doing. So the, analyzing the pattern, as analyzing the trends, analyzing the important of, uh, importance of it, uh, and the ability to correlate different events and uh, and basically make sense a little bit more around uh, uh, what's going on with with the observability. Other topic that it brought up: uh, the ability to, to run root cause analysis just the ability to run sequences of data, the ability to analyze what's going on, the ability to uh, to understand the complexity of the system is, is something which is really important and, and can be done with LLM. Uh, predictive analytics, um, another area that uh, uh, that kind of like uh, was recommended by ChatGPT is the use of LLM uh, in observability and how to do it. I think this is definitely something that uh, uh, that uh, that can provide a lot of values when it comes to to observability. Uh, knowledge base enrichment. Um, it start it can start with a simple thing like documentation. Um, we all know that the varieties of systems today is is pretty wide. 
the complexity of how do I instrument different languages, uh, different uh, Kubernetes environments, whether using ephemeral, whether using uh, specific servers, uh, if I'm using a managed Kubernetes, it's so it's varying so much. My ability to run through that knowledge and understand, first of all, how do I make sense out of it uh, is, is definitely uh, something that uh, can be used with LLM and simplifying it. Uh, continuous learning and adaptation, I think it definitely goes without saying the ability to learn the data, the ability to look at the data, the ability to to consume uh, all of the vast amount of data that uh, that uh, that people are sending and people are using in order to, to in their observability system is definitely something that is uh, that is valuable. Uh, and last but not least, the whole aspect of uh, collaborative uh, problem solving. So basically, just act as another human being uh, in the team and being able to ask to use as a virtual assistant and do things. Uh, even basic things like uh, uh, like uh, uh, recommend some some dashboards, some visualization, like searches and stuff like that, and also definitely ask answer uh, uh, kind of like very specific uh, specific questions. Uh, I have to say that one of the things that we see at Logs.io is that um, environments are getting more and more complex. The reason they're getting more and more complex is because uh, organizations and companies. Uh, require the flexibility. They require the ability to update the versions many, many times a day. They require the ability to develop very, very fast in order to stay competitive in this market. Uh, and environments are getting very complex. So if it's cloud environment, if it's Kubernetes environment, if it's Kubernetes managed environment, if it's managed with uh, kind of like sort of like ephemeral uh, 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 containers like uh, like Fargot and, and the like, uh, these all create a lot of level of levels of complexity, uh, not to mention the different uh, programming language uh, uh, developers are using today and uh, kind of like combination of them within the same cluster running on the same nodes and, uh, and all of it create a lot of complexity. With the increase of complexity uh, comes the increase of the the decrease of troubleshooting time. So troubleshooting time becomes more difficult. It takes longer to troubleshoot issues in production just because of the level of complexity. So complexity was increased to improve the agility and the speed of development. But we all know today that that observability tools are not enough. Uh, they are becoming very complex in order to adhere to the complexity of our environments. And, uh, and <clears throat> excuse me, from a survey we did, we see that uh, I think this is the fourth year in a row that the mean time to remediation is increasing, uh, which meaning that environments are getting more and more complex and, uh, and the observability tool are not giving the solution that they, that kind of like being acceptable. In our view, um, one solution to this is uh, the introduction of uh, of LLM and uh, generative AI into observability. And uh, I'm gonna talk about how we view the world, but you just see the answers that uh, kind of like ChatGPT itself brought and you see the level uh, that uh, of, of help that something like that can help, can bring to overall observability. So what do we say as opposed to what uh, kind of like ChatGPT says around uh, how to help it? So one thing is, is um, I'm gonna make my system easier to use. So we all know that, uh, especially when it comes to open source uh, solutions like uh, open search dashboards, uh, Grafana, using them is, uh, they're very functional, uh, they work great, but they're not simple to use. So anyone here who's been had the chance or the opportunity or, uh, kind of like running Lucene queries on open search and understanding the complexity of it and sometimes getting really frustrated about not finding what it wants is something that uh, that uh, uh, definitely something that ChatGPT can help with and uh, in LLM. Creating visualizations. Uh, I don't know how many of you had uh, the, the pleasure of configuring visualizations in Grafana or an open search dashboard. It does take a lot of time. Uh, these systems are very functional uh, but the simplicity is not there. So uh, just being able to write, and, and you can try it on your own. You can just open up your GPT and, and ask it to create a visualization in, uh, for Grafana that does a, a certain thing. 
and uh, and and basically, uh, uh, if and then basically, it does a pretty good job of creating it. Uh, definitely converting the text to the scene stuff like that. Same thing around creating alerts. Um, if you've ever tried to create alerts on Open Search or try to create alerts on uh, Grafana or something else, you know the the level of complexity. This is something that definitely uh, ChatGPT and LLM can help with, and we're already starting to see the use of it um, within what we do. The other thing which is uh, also can be helpful for uh, uh, for this is uh, is there's a lot of mundane work that is very error prone uh, in everything that we do. So starting from how do I collect data for my cluster? There's so many ways uh, if I'm collecting data, how do I configure open telemetry? Am I using open telemetry? Am I using FluentD? Am I using Prometheus? Am I using uh, um, different collectors for the tracing? Which languages do I do? How do I do instrumentation? <clears throat> All of it require a lot of expertise and knowledge. And uh, and it's a lot of work to basically understand and get it right. The other thing, changing my Helm chart. Like, how do I know that I change it in a way that resources are configured properly, that it's not going to uh, crush my cluster, that it's configured within the, the right namespace? How do I know that, I, that I'm doing everything, uh, everything right and that everything is being configured properly? So these are some mundane tasks that are kind of like error prone when it comes to the kind of like combination between uh, Kubernetes and observability that we already find a lot of uh, help uh, kind of like using uh, using ChatGPT and uh, and using LLM. Uh, but, but this is not what the future is going to look like. So everything I wrote here, and I think this is part of the challenges and the gaps on, on LLM is, the, is, is a little bit of the lack of creativity. And, uh, and this is not what the future is going to look like. Uh, the way we see the future is going to look like is that you will be able to basically have conversations with your data. So um, be very interactive. There are a few things that uh, really um, LLM introduced and, and changed in the way we interact with data. So one of them is the ability to understand uh, images and the ability to understand data in a very robust way. So you just give it the data and understand exactly what's going on. So this is uh, uh, this is definitely one thing. The ability to understand plain English. Uh, I don't know how many of you, I'm sure most of you have tried uh, um, kind of like ChatGPT for different, uh, for different uh, questions, whether it's kind of like different uh, things that you do in life and uh, just the ability to write in plain English, English and the level of understanding that exists there is, is amazing. Uh, and I think last but not least is the ability to ask follow-on questions. So um, if you, um, some of you probably remember the, the kind of like the, the introduction when, when Google first launched many, many years ago, there was a search engine that existed at that time as well, but they've introduced a concept that you only have to have one question and you ask, you don't have to select what are you going to look for? You don't have to select uh, as, as previous search engines were configured. You just have to ask your question and that's it. But every question you ask to the own search engine, which the same thing includes in, in observability and log analytics, every question you ask is an independent question. You ask it, you get the result. You ask another question, you get the result of another question. There is no ability to ask follow-on questions. Uh, and what happens today is if you want to try and, and, and troubleshoot a system, Basically, what's happening is that you're looking for the the beginning of the thread, and you see you may be looking at a bunch of graphs, and you see something which is behaving not the way you expect it to behave, and then you have to copy the server name, and then you have to filter by the server name, and then you have to go to the logs and search only the logs for the server name on the service that you're running, or the different pod that you're having, uh, and then you're looking at the traces for it. So everything you do is a step by step, and you continue basically to filter out data that you don't think is relevant for the problem until you get the resolution of it. The, the introducing of, of LLM and uh, into the observability allows you to ask questions and follow on questions. So you can say, hey, I need to know which of my pod is having the highest amount of CPU. Now show me the, all the error logs of this uh, pod. Now show me all the services and when was the last uh, restart of it. So instead of me looking at graphs and, and sifting through a bunch of text and reading all these logs line, I can just ask questions in plain English and I can just continue to follow with the following questions uh, in order to kind of like get a sense of uh, 
of, of what exists there and get a sense of how to how to do it and how to troubleshoot. So uh, um, uh, I have a yeah, I have a question here uh, from an attendee. Can the end user who uses this LLM ensure that the LLM is private to, to uh, his end uh, user only? So yes, absolutely yes. If you look at the commercial uh, implementation of LLM today, they definitely ensure privacy, uh, lack of use of data in other uh, in other learnings and other model training and stuff like that. So, so absolutely, uh, this is this has been ensured definitely by by anyone is kind of like using the uh, commercial. Uh, implementation of uh, of this and it's it's kind of like a prerequisite as as anyone using uh, observability at all. Um, so I am just going to take the opportunity here uh, and until we have any more questions to kind of like go and and show you a little bit of what kind of like what we've implemented and how we see the world with uh, with LLM. Uh, so this is Logs.io and this is kind of like our app three sixty and I can see different services that are running. Uh, and I can see their performance and what they uh, what they are behaving in the system, and we're correlating everything. We're 100% hotel uh, hotel best, but we're correlating the kind of like the tracing information, the different operations, the logging information, and all the metrics that are coming from the actual infrastructure. So we've integrated. Uh, we call it observability IQ, uh, and you can basically ask simple questions like, "How's the health of my service looking?" Uh, and the only thing we feed. Uh, we feed this is the information that exists on this page. So you can see that it's a pretty good analysis and this page does not have a lot of data. So this page, I mean, I can basically see it in my own eyes and I can see what's going on. I can see the deployment, but just the ability to, uh, uh, if you're looking at a page that, that creates 10, 100 times more uh, more data in it, then definitely you can uh, you can value the 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 ease and the simplicity of what's going on. So very simple, ask it a question. Uh, this is what I got. I can ask a follow-on question, like make it shorter. I don't want to read uh, all of these things. It's too much for me to read. Uh, I just want to know that uh, that there is deployments, a gradual latency increase at this time. I can look at this time. I can figure out what's going on. I can ask them which alerts. Uh, should I add uh, and uh, and basically uh, you can see the level uh, of the data that I see and the only thing it's seeing is like like different alerts that I can trigger. So I can it already gives me all the parameters that I see for the alert. It already gives me different uh, configuration that I need to know and and definitely very valuable in the way that if I am maybe a new SRE and I work in the environment and someone told me there's a there is an issue with my service say hey what's the problems give me all the problems and I can take it from there and I can start to analyze it and I can I can take it a step further and now that I know that there is a uh, that there might be an issue with a certain deployment I can easily click on a, on the deployment I can see uh, different things that are happening and uh, and definitely take it basically to the next level and troubleshoot it in in the way that that I would troubleshoot it quicker uh, but I can continue to ask questions and I can continue to understand the environment and I can continue to to drill through it. And I think this is basically you're creating a conversation, uh, con continuous conversation with the data. Uh, so this is uh, uh, this is kind of like one example which we integrated into our uh, uh, our app 360, which is the way you you will look at uh, at service level and the performance of it uh, uh, from the application view. Um, Talking about Kubernetes, uh, same thing happened on Kubernetes and same uh, thing that we've increased, we've created in Kubernetes itself. So if you look at, uh, let me start from the beginning. Um, if I have like a deployment that I see that there's a bunch of errors, I can click on the deployment and I can just basically ask a question. Are there, uh, maybe analyze my YAML and see if there is any potential performance or reliability issues. So. It already goes through. It knows everything about the YAML. We didn't have to teach the uh, LLM anything. We just say this is a YAML file, which they know what it is. We just say it's a Kubernetes, which it knows what it is. We gave them the parameters, which they know what they are. Uh, and it gave me some recommendation of um, what should I look at? What's going on? I have security vulnerabilities here. I have to critical. Now I can continue to uh, uh, create follow-on questions on this and investigate it. And I know what needs to be done. I can drill down to them. 
uh, to the pod level and, and basically do the same thing. Um, this, again, it's not a lot of data that I have here. I mean, we have logs, we have metrics that are relevant to the different pods. We have traces that are happening. We have security information. So it's not nothing. It's not like, but this is a single pod that I'm looking at right now uh, and uh, and the ability to create it. And um, um, is my pod experiencing any resource constraint? Um, probably the answer is no, because uh, uh, my resources is pretty low on this one. Uh, some networking, they did have a lot of restarts, which probably need to look at uh, at the code and what's going on. But this is the overall, and obviously I can uh, I can continue and ask questions. And we kind of like pre-made uh, uh, a bunch of questions here, uh, but you can ask any question in, in plain English. And our vision is that basically, uh, instead of looking at graphs and understanding what they mean and understanding and trying to configure it and trying to change things, I can just ask the questions of what I want to know and what I want to do. Uh, and eventually it's going to give me the answers that I want. So these are the uh, kind of like the way we view LLM with all the other capabilities that uh, kind of like ChatGPT recommended that we introduce as well. These are things that we're going to introduce together with what we do. But we thought it as a first step is uh, there's so much data. Um, and uh, these are just like very simple examples that they show. Imagine you're looking at the Grafana dashboards or open search dashboard that has 50 different tabs in it with different visualization in it. And you just want to see what's going on. Um, so you want someone to just basically tell you kind of like, what is the first thing I should look at? And, uh, and you can, you can continue it from there. So we think it's going to be a major, a major change in the way kind of like people interact with data. It's going to be a major change in the way of the simplicity. Uh, it's going to allow us as, as an engineering professional to catch up with the complexity of our environments and uh, and definitely, uh, um, hopefully, can allow us to troubleshoot quicker and uh, and reach our goals, which is develop faster. Um, so I uh, I have a bunch of questions here. Uh, the other thing which I also didn't uh, I didn't mention is that uh, the use of LLM is also going to allow us to reduce the cost of uh, of observability. We know cost of observability is becoming very very high. Uh, just the ability to store it in a lower cost storage and let uh, someone like a, like a different LLM or different a ChatGPT or a different model run through it is uh, is definitely valuable as opposed to storing it hot. Um, so um, so there is a question here. We're required to store logs event for twelve to eighteen months. Can we retrieve the logs event for a particular host very quickly? Uh, it all depends. You can retrieve it very, very quickly. It all depends on kind of like the balance between how much money you're willing to pay for it and the speed that you want. So it could be fractions of a second. It could be a few seconds. There are many tiers to kind of like uh, 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 storing the data here. Um, are you using message services to stream your infrastructure data, observability data into your LLM? If so, which uh, we're actually not using... <laughs> Excuse me, messaging service to stream data into uh, into LLM. We're using the API directly, uh, and we're actually streaming. We're not streaming all the data; only the data that you look at. This is how we implemented it. Uh, this is again our first step of it, and and the way we 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 use it is the observability IQ is basically. As if you were looking at the data, you were looking at the graphs, you were looking at what, what you want to troubleshoot. Uh, and instead of just going graph by graph and trying to analyze what's going on, basically uh, someone else or a lot of other someones uh, are looking at the graphs and understanding what's going on and definitely give you uh, a quicker way of analyzing data. Uh, I have a challenge. We're using containers orchestrated by Kubernetes. However, the container is ephemeral and all the number of pods will scale up or down depending on the user load. In such cases, how can the event correlation and analysis when a pod which is previously alive is not is not shut down? Uh, 
so yeah, I think there are uh, obviously uh, one of the things you touched here is the level of complexity of running Kubernetes environment these days. Um, most of it is ephemeral; things go up and down. If you don't collect the data in real time, uh, the ability to correlate it is uh, is uh, is is very difficult. Um, and, and I think this is something that that obviously is the basis of an observability solution: the ability to understand things in real time. Um, can we ask Kubernetes cluster level question like which plugin is or is ready to upgrade? Absolutely. So um, if you give it the information, you ask her the plugins, and they know exactly what's going on. I think the other the, the one thing that we do have to remember though around uh, uh, LLM, it does a very good job on understanding basic things that are already existing. It doesn't know, for example, the versions of different plugins that exist today because the data that it holds is is data that was used when training the model. Now models are getting very uh, are being developed very fast, and uh, and these things is something that is changing. But if you ask it a question of like, for example, am I running the latest version of my uh, uh, of my uh, of different uh, uh, plugin, then it, it wouldn't know what is the latest version. You can ask it what is the version that I'm running right now, and you can compare it. But the ability to correlate data with what's happening right now uh, in the world or in different environment is is something that is uh, that LLM is not uh, uh, is not something that is uh, that is good at. But it's an easy to create uh, visualization like that. Um, how can you check for or ensure that LLM is not having hallucination or it's returning accurate answer? This is a very good question. Uh, I think we've all heard all the stories that exist around LLM and the ability to uh, um, to invent things that do not exist in reality. Uh, I think that this is this is something that is it's definitely something which is a concern. It's definitely something that might happen. I think the reality of it, when you talk about the environments of observability, when you when you ask it to analyze specific data, the likelihood of, of hallucinating or the likelihood of inventing stuff that doesn't exist is, is decreasing. Um, we all know how much energy, money, compute power, effort, engineering effort is being poured into these models these days. Uh, there is definitely a, a huge competition around the different models. Uh, and I think the whole hallucination, data creation, data invention, uh, accuracy of the data is something which is going to be uh, addressed, if not already addressed, uh, uh, pretty soon. So it might happen, uh, but then again, I think when you know your environment, you know that. I mean, if you, you ask about a pod that is having a problem and you give you like a pod that doesn't exist just because it wants to create a name, then I, I think it's uh, it's definitely something that you know. Uh, which models do you use? Do you use open source models? So uh, we've tried a bunch of models. Uh, what we're using today is we're using uh, Claude from Anthropic. Uh, we find it to be a very good model, um, but we're continuously evaluating different models against each other and the ability to, uh, to provide the meaningful, simple, and accurate uh, information. Uh, so this is what, what we're using. It doesn't mean it's it's... I'm not like recommending it or saying it's the best. Definitely, the models are very, very good. But uh, this is what we are using today. Uh, can I associate resource usage with cost? For example, can I question them how this podcast per month? If yes, what kind of setup do you need to do? Yes, you can. Um, uh, you you need to uh, obviously if you want to associate it with cost, you need to uh, you need to add the cost information. So you need to have the cost per uh, of each one of the pods, and then you can definitely. Uh, uh, run it uh, and associate the, the the cost per month, and uh, and understand kind of like what are the gaps, where can you optimize, and one other thing we can say is like, hey, I want to optimize my my environment, like give me some recommendation of of optimization, and it will do a pretty good job around uh, around optimizing it. Um, can it be used with things like APM where you're tracking the flow end to end across multiple layers, types of microservices? This is exactly what uh, what we have here. So uh, App360 is is our uh, is our sort of like an APM, um, and it does track everything. And I can uh, uh, show you. So even on the map perspective. Uh, it it kind of like tracks all the microservices, and I can drill into which one of them, uh, and ask and I can ask them like specific question, and and definitely, 
again, this is our first take uh, in this world, but definitely a good uh, uh, a good way to uh, to kind of like leverage LLM and understand the connectivity, understand what's connecting into what. The ability to understand images, the ability to understand data is is phenomenal. And I have to say that this is uh, uh, um, this actually caught me by surprise by the level of accuracy the data that he's having. Uh, as Logzaio, which challenges are you currently facing in relation to Gen, Gen AI? Uh, I think uh, some of the challenges that we're facing is is how do we get it into more and more places? I think we're it's, it's really making a change in what we do. Uh, we have a lot of ideas, and uh, the question that we're having is how, what is the user experience going to look like in two years, even in one year? I think this is going to happen quicker than than we expect. Am I as a user going to sift through hundreds of graphs and data to understand what's going on? Uh, or is this thing going to go away? And all I'm going to have is the chat. And I can chat with my data. And when I want to see the graph, I'm going to ask the chat, show me the graph of what I'm having right now. So this is definitely something that we're uh, thinking about. And uh, and uh, it's I wouldn't say it, it's, it's a challenge, but I would say it's... Uh, Definitely an exciting thing for us to understand how is data interaction going to look like in a year, in two years, and what is going to be the implication on, on observability and also on cost and where can we save on cost. Um, uh, when it comes to metrics, your LLM is looking at metric queries, which are already pre canned Does your LLM support examining metrics and or queries and potential recommendation? also based on availability and other metrics query. I mean, connecting the LLM to your data sources and let it examine it for there is, uh, yeah. So the question, so what we've implemented today, uh, again, is the ability to use the LLM on the data that you already configured. I already have a, a, a Kubernetes dashboard. It's just very complicated. It just has a lot of data, a lot of parameters around the deployment, around the pods, around the nodes around the interaction between them, around the traces uh, inside of them, around the, the infrastructure level, both on the pod level and on the node level, on the cluster level and the resource consumption. It's just a lot of data. And the way we've implemented it uh, at LLM is like, I want to understand the data. I already configure it. Uh, whether LLM can look at data which I haven't configured, absolutely. This is our plan to do on the logging. On the logging side is saying, hey, I'm going to look at the logging and I'm going to understand Give me an anomaly here. Show me a log that didn't happen before. Show me something that happened after my deployment. All of these things uh, definitely can be done with an M. Uh, is a uh, log solution integrated with Red Hat OpenShift? Yes, this is we are. Um, assuming if you had the IP practice. Uh, assuming if you know IP belong to a C2, com like a command and control server, can we rely on LLM to do threat hunting, detect activities, which as a uh, city? Uh, um, yeah, I think the, the, the challenge with uh, with kind of like threat hunting and stuff like that is, is, like I said, I mean, LLM is not updated with the recent data. It updated with recent capabilities. So I can ask it to ask a question of my data, but does he know that uh, the IP belong to uh, uh, to a command and control uh, server and then I can do uh, threat hunting? He doesn't have the capability to uh, uh, to do this, but this is something which can be achieved uh, obviously in, in, a, in a SIM solution, in our SIM solution, in other, it's it's a relatively easy and simple, uh, a simple problem to do. But I can ask LLM if I do have this data and I do have the threat enrichment, uh, I can ask it to basically correlate it and understand what's going on. Uh, is there a training or fine tuning phase for this? Uh, there is no training on fine tuning. Uh, these models are pre-built, uh, pre-made. A lot of people uh, spend a lot of time and energy on on making sure that they that they work the way they are and continue to evolve them. Uh, how much infrastructure resources is required for this uh, infrastability? And is there a uh, difference for small environment? Uh, no, there is no deterrent for small environment. Uh, basically, what I'm showing you right now is the astronomy shop, which is the it's a very small environment. Uh, this is the the kind of like the the default implementation for open telemetry, which we're using for. Our demos and um, and it works in small, it works in large environment, and it's fine. Uh, 
the fine-tuned cloud models uh, with observability data, uh, we actually don't fine-tune it. We just give it the model. We uh, we we just give it the data points here. Uh, we tell them that this is deployment and this is what needs to be done, and and this is kind of like how it works. Uh, After we train the LLM to do a particular task well, can we then connect the LLM to our SOAR platform as an instruction set? I Again, I, I wouldn't collect, connect LLM to a SOAR or any type of automation that uh, that exists in this. Um, again, I think it's going to take time. Uh, maybe it's months, maybe it's years until we get a lot of confidence in it. I think right now we're using it as a way to mitigate the, the need to sift through a lot of data. So this is kind of like how we're using it. Uh, this is how we see it saving time for engineers. And instead of me like sifting through graphs and data and logs and metrics, I can just ask a question in plain English and wait a second and get the answer. Would I connect it to a SOAR? Maybe in the future, maybe in the future, we just have it ask the data uh, and then it would just ask the relevant data and, uh, and I would get the answer and then it would take care of the environment uh, automatically. So this is something that uh, that the thing is going to be uh, um, kind of like in the future. Um, so hope I I'm really hopeful that I uh, kind of like intrigued you with the with the potential that uh, LLM and generative AI has around uh, um, has around uh, uh, kind of like the value of the observability, how it can help all of us uh, run our environments better how we can make our life simpler and easier uh, um, when it comes to troubleshooting, when it comes to configuring alerts, when it comes to creating observability and correlating between different sets of data. And, uh, and I really want to thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here. And uh, hopefully you find it interesting. Uh, feel free to check our website, uh, Logs.io. Um, you can give it a try and see uh, how it works for you ask a bunch of questions. We're always looking for feedback. Uh, so I am going to return it back to Candice. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Asaf, for your time today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. As a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today. We hope you join us for future webinars. Have a wonderful day.